Oh, yes, absolute ninja. Goodness me, man, that scared the life out of me. Woo. Hi, I'm Henry, and no, unfortunately for me, this video is not sponsored by Monster Munch. Maybe one day. I'm a full-time landscape photographer, and I am seldom seen without my faithful full-frame camera, my Nikon Z7. In this video, however, I decide to challenge myself by leaving my beloved Nikon at home. I head out armed with my humble iPhone 13 mini, a newly downloaded app, and no tripod. I feared the worst, but the results may surprise you as much as they did me. Do you know what I feel like without my camera, and without barely any weight in this bag? I feel naked. So I'm gonna make a little bit of a prediction right off the bat with regards to the photography today. I reckon, I am pretty sure, that it's barely gonna be any different, and here is why. First things first, the quality of these iPhone cameras, as long as it's not too dark, gonna be absolutely fine for what we're doing today. And secondly, it's all about me or you. It's the photographer that does the work. All right, compared to my Nikon Z7, you know, an expensive full frame camera, I've got decent lenses. The image quality isn't gonna be anywhere near as good. But that's only if we're making big, massive prints. That's when it matters. All I'm gonna be doing is showing you the photographs I take on this YouTube video and maybe frigging putting them on my website or putting them on Instagram or something. It just doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, I'm still the photographer. I've still got to have an understanding of composition. I've got to have a know-how of the light, how to react to the light. I've still got to post-process my photographs in, in Lightroom and Photoshop, you know, apply my own style to them. So the iPhone is gonna be absolutely fine. So my photography bag is really, really light. If I'm being honest, I shouldn't have even come out with this big bag. There's barely anything in it. All I've really got is my videoing stuff, my drone, my Nikon Z30, and of course a nice little sandwich as well. <laughs> but it's proper nice, I must admit. It feels weird knowing that this is my tool for today's photography, but yeah, it all feels good, it's nice. Um, so I, I had a really quick rudimentary Google search last night, literally just put into Google, um, app to help me shoot in RAW on iPhone. And the first one that came up was this app called Halide, I think. It's paid for, but it's proper cheap. I think it's like 10 pound a year. This isn't sponsored, by the way. I was just really interested. Um, but I'm using a seven day free trial at the minute and I'll see how I get on with it. But it allows me to adjust my shutter speed, my ISO, and most importantly, it allows me to shoot in RAW. Now, the only real problem that I can foresee with this, you know, using my iPhone, has nothing to do with the iPhone camera itself. It's got nothing to do with the image quality or anything. It's actually focal length or the lack of versatility that I've got as a photographer with my focal lengths. Basically, this has got a sort of wide angle lens and then a sort of a mid range lens, which is still pretty wide. So I'm quite limited in that sense, but I don't mind. It's just gonna add to the challenge of this afternoon's photography shoot. But the thing is, I'm the type of photographer where I just focus on that background there. I'd love to be getting right off into all of that beautiful light and those gorgeous conditions there with a telephoto lens. But like I said, I can't do it. So I've got to sort of try and think outside the box a little bit, I suppose. So I'll pop it up on the screen here. This is using this like Halide app. And uh, I'm gonna take a shot, something along those lines there. So you can see nice sort of dry stone wall down in the foreground. And I am trying my best to capture um, that drama and that wonderful light that we've got down there in the sort of Rydal Valley over Rydal Water, looking back to the Langdale Pikes. Absolutely brilliant. So you can see I've got my histogram there as well. And I've also got the zebras on. So you can see if I'm overexposing, it shows the zebras. So I could bring that down, bring it down. There we go. And the ISO, I'll put down to ISO 34. Brilliant. And that's my shot there, something like that. I'll get the histogram off so I can compose it properly. And there we go, something like that. And as you're looking at it there, I'll just make sure we're level. See, it's got the little yellow box in the middle. As you're looking at it there, um, if you look at the sky, the clouds on, on the phone, it's just, there's so much beautiful detail. So this is why I love being able to shoot in RAW and being able to really control and have eyes on my histogram. 
Last thing I want to do is overexpose that bright patch of sky up there. I want to retain all that detail. And again, just to give myself the best possible chance to post process this photograph as I would normally with my Nikon Z7 when I get it back into Lightroom. But I'd say that's probably all right, you know, it's probably all right. So that shot there with that little sort of coppice of trees was pretty much, you know, the same as the previous shot, same direction at least, just maybe a little bit more interest in the foreground. I just grabbed the shot back here as well. What's going on, man? Three photographs already. Madness. So you see a nice little crag there, a few nice trees scattered on the edge of this um, fell as it dips down into the valley. And then just, I think it's the clouds more than anything, man. It's just so dramatic and moody. I love it. Um, that's probably one thing that has to be mentioned, to be fair, isn't it? Is like, it's just there in my pocket all the time that, you know, it's not necessarily good or bad, I suppose, but probably just nice when you're out with your camera, because what I love is, you know, I say it all the time on this channel, I love composition. I love that challenge of composition, that thought process that it brings. So for me to just be more inclined to get stuck into that mindset a little bit more, if that makes sense, that can only be a good thing. If my Nikon Z7 is in my bag, or sometimes even if I've just got it like on this Peak Design clip, I just look at a scene and think, nah, it's not worth faffing about with the camera, I'll just leave it, whereas the phone, by the time you've opened up the app, it's a matter of seconds, it's well quick, and I do like that, that's cool. So, for those of you that watch me regularly, I'm heading up a Wainwright today, a fell called Low Pike. I started from down in Ambleside, that town that you could just see there before Windermere, the big lake, and it should be a nice easy one. And I tell you what, I'm looking forward to doing a Wainwright again, to be honest. And like I've been saying, the conditions are just quality. So we are getting the best possible chance, like I've said, with this iPhone to get some nice photographs. So let's continue on up, see what else we can find. So just quickly before we start running up this mountain, I've just noticed what I think could potentially be a really nice subject. I'll turn it around here. I've noticed if you look at the top of that hill there next to the dry stone wall, there's a bit of a style just to the left hand side of that rock. And I definitely don't know for sure, but I don't know. I've just got a feeling that that could be a really nice little foreground element with all the nice views we've been getting so far. So off piste, let's go and investigate. So it was worth it, it turns out, but not from the perspective that I was thinking. Looking back to the views we've been having so far, there's a big dry stone wall in the way here, so it just kind of doesn't work perspective wise, but pretty much as it's set up there, look, as you've seen it, some nice trees up there on the sort of left hand side of the composition, and they're going to stick the style on the right hand side, you know, just to sort of balance things out. I even like, see the little hole there for the dogs to get through, where's it at? Can you see it down there? There it is, there it is, <laughs> down there somewhere. Um, it all just looks really sort of traditional Lakeland. And once again, I move myself out of the way, look at the clouds, man. They are just absolutely beautiful. And this is, I'll, I'll mention it again, this is why I just really want to shoot in raw. I want to be making sure that I'm not overexposing them highlights. So let's grab this shot. <laughs> so I'm having to park the style photograph for just one second. You'll have to bear with me because we've got some incredible light back over the Coniston Fells. And I'm quickly just trying to forge a composition with the iPhone. So you can see here, I'll pop it up on the screen. If I stand on this rock here and try and peer over this dry stone wall, a composition sort of comes together. We've got Rydal Water down on the right hand side. We've got this amazing light back towards the Coniston Fells. And of course, once again, 
these stunning, dramatic clouds. So I've already got my settings dialed in, one one thousandth of a second and ISO 34. That is fine. I'm going to keep a little bit of that dry stone wall down at the bottom of the frame. There's a bit of foreground maybe. And there we go, nice and level. That's the photograph. We've got it. I've already taken a couple of test shots from there as well. So I do feel like one of them, hopefully anyway, is going to be all right. Oh, that was fleeting light, let me tell you. Right, let me turn you around so we can get back to this style photograph. So I have changed my mind with regards to the perspective of this composition a little bit. I'll show you now, but it's pretty much same, same as, as I was talking about it before. The only thing, I'll show you there now, look, the only difference is I want them, them trees and the, the top of that crag sort of in the middle of the frame. And then, you know, you can see there, we've just got the style down in the bottom right hand side, nice and simple. I'll get my histogram up, make sure that we're shooting at the correct shutter speed for the exposure and one one thousandth of a second. Again, brilliant, the light hasn't changed that much. And as you can see there, I think that will probably do us. And once again, I have to mention, it is just so comforting, I suppose, to know that I'm shooting this in RAW and probably most importantly, to know that I'm not overexposing them highlights. I've got full control over that histogram, which is absolutely brilliant. So I reckon probably another couple of decent photographs there. What is going on? Absolute confetti photographs all over the shop, whatever that means. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna start making a little bit of headway now up towards Low Pike. So I am aware that I'm stopping a lot and that I'm taking plenty of photographs and that I'm talking a lot, but um, I just have to share this little photograph with you here because I'm trying something a little bit different. So first things first, the composition is probably quite obvious. We've got a lovely dry stone wall here that's leading down into Windermere, the Great Lake there. And then once again, the clouds are just absolutely fantastic. Now, the iPhone is struggling a little bit here with dynamic range, which if you don't know what that is, basically in this scene, there's a lot of bright highlights, but also a lot of dark shadows. And the iPhone's struggling to deal with that. My Nikon Z7 here would be absolutely fine, but I'm gonna try and manually override <laughs> the poor dynamic range of the iPhone, if you will, uh, by bracketing. And again, if you don't know what that is, it's really simple. Basically, I'm taking one photograph that's quite dark, that's underexposed, for the sky because the sky is really bright and then I'll take a second photograph that's a little bit brighter to expose for the dark foreground and then I will blend them together in post-production and uh, then we'll have a perfectly exposed photograph from foreground all the way to the background. So I hope that makes sense. The only trouble here is really is that I don't have a tripod so I need to be as still uh, as possible. So I'll pop it up on the screen for you to see here. All I've got to change really is the shutter speed. So we'll get the ISO down to 34 and let's go for the exposure for the sky first and foremost. So that is going to be a little bit darker. So we'll go somewhere like that. So you can see there it's telling me with the purple that the, the darks, the shadows are too dark. But that doesn't matter here because we're only doing this for the sky. This photograph is dark on purpose for the sky. And there we go, grab that. And now I've got to keep the camera as still as possible and then take a brighter photograph. So it doesn't matter that the sky is overexposing because once again, this brighter photograph is for the foreground. And there we go. One brighter photograph, one darker photograph. Hope that makes sense to any beginners out there, but hopefully that's me getting around the poor-ish dynamic range of the iPhone. <laughs> We are up and I'm crawling, <laughs> I'm crawling man, it is so windy. The wind is coming from behind me and it turns out all the way up we've been sort of partly sheltered by, well, the fell, by Low Pike. But as soon as I've got to the peak here, absolutely hit me like a ton of bricks. So back in that direction, 
you could see, well, this peak here is, is called High Pike. So that, that's another Wayne right that I'll be doing one day. Um, but I absolutely love the views back in that direction. Really different, I feel, from anything we've been photographing so far. I think actually in Wainwright's guide, he describes this direction as being really bleak. And I'm sure he means that in like a really positive way, you know. So I'm gonna grab a photograph behind <laughs> with the iPhone, of course, and I'll show you it um, in a second. It's gonna be really simple. I don't need to show you through how I'm gonna photograph it. I'll probably use this dry stone wall here as a bit of a leading line into the bleakness and into high pie. And once again, I mean, we're getting some nice patches of light, but the clouds are lovely and dramatic. And then I've got one more photograph in mind, but I think it's gonna require me to actually go back down from the summit ever so slightly. So I'll tell you what, it is nice to be out of that wind. That was proper rough up there, but you've probably just seen the photograph. I took a couple of different perspectives, one with the wide angle lens. And I think I took one as just like a portrait, you know, orientation as well. So I don't know which one I showed you. They both looked all right. Now, I think I just said to you, there's one more photograph that I'd like to get. It's going to require me to move a little bit further down low pike here. And I'll try my best to show you, but off back in this direction, you can see, look, we just keep getting little patches of light every now and again on the Coniston Fells. And what I noticed a bit further down, maybe even just as far as there, not too far, we get a really nice perspective of Rydal Water here um, in conjunction with the Coniston Fells, a really nice composition. It's one of those where the composition is pretty much there for us. All we've got to do is get ourselves in the right spot and probably wait for the light. So we'll move on down now. Right, so I'm just, <laughs> just running off piste a little bit, but I think I've found the perspective that I'm after. I'll just put yours down here in a second. Hang on. So you can see, look at them rays of light, <sighs> sort of in the wrong place. We want all this action to sort of be, you know, somewhere in this area, but either way, we'll work with what we've got. And uh, I don't mind, whoa, don't mind being, or practicing a little bit of patience, um, but, I'm gonna spend some time just to figure out some sort of composition, but I mean, like I said before, the composition's all, almost there for us, really. Um, we've gotta just play around a little bit as not to shoot a big wide shot for the crack. I still wanna try and place some of these subjects, Rydal Water, the Coniston Fells, the light. I want them to be in certain places within the frame. So, bit of a waiting game. So I've been here now for probably about 25 minutes and this is the best that's happened so far. So I'm gonna take this opportunity. You may be able to see right off in the distance, we are just getting a few little rays of light that are hitting the sides of the Coniston Fells. And it does look really nice. It wasn't what I imagined. I thought we were gonna have some really glorious, uh, vibrant patches of light down here, closer towards Rydal Water, but it is what it is. Um, and I'll pop this up on the screen for you to see now so you can see how I'm composing it. So we've just got a few rocks down here in the bottom right of the frame and I just, I wanted to stick Rydal Water bang in the middle and you can see oh, that particular ray of light now is coming through pretty st strong. ISO 34 and then I'll just adjust my shutter speed. I'll just use the zebras because I want to be quick. And then what's that? One, one two hundredth of a second, I think. One, one thousand two hundredth. And there we go, simple as that. So we've captured that nice little bit of light. And uh, yeah, like I said, I was hoping for a little bit more. I might wait around for a tiny bit longer, but if that's the last photograph of the day, it's still gonna be pretty decent. <laughs> so I'd just like to ask before I leave, if anyone knows, firstly, 
uh, this Halide app, whatever it's called. Is that the best one from anyone else's experience? You know, I know some of the iPhone Pro models and different smartphones will actually shoot in RAW natively, but I need an app. <laughs> if anyone knows of any better ones, please let me know. And secondly, I just mentioned then, didn't I, and throughout the video a couple of times, I'm aware that some iPhones, some smartphones, they do actually have the telephoto lenses on them. Are they any good? The thing is, you know, when I buy a new phone, I'm not really looking for a decent camera purely just because well, I don't really know. Like I'm a photographer, I've got thousands of pounds worth of gear at home. And I always just think like, I don't need a good camera on my iPhone, but now I sort of know I can shoot in RAW and I can probably most importantly control my histogram, you know, shooting manual and that. I'll probably think about using it a little bit more often, you know, if I'm out and about, that sort of thing. But yeah, are these telephoto lenses on smartphones and iPhones, are they any good? Because that'd be class, you know, being able to get into these mountains. And now I can see the, the rays of light that are, st that are still there on the Coniston Fells. That'd be really cool. Um, so, yeah, let me know in the comments. But it's been a lovely little adventure, a little bit experimental. But thank you so much for tuning in. And I always appreciate your support. And uh, I shall see you, as always, on the next adventure. Out! We got time.